In this video, we're going to look at creating code in Excel VBA that allows us to run a loop through a list of email contacts on our spreadsheet and send personalized email messages to each of those contacts. So part of what our code will do is reference this cell here, which contains our body of our email message. And if I hit F2, you can see it's a formula and it pulls from whatever values are in this range here, H2 through K2. So if I add a different person to this range here, this message will update automatically. And rather than manually copy and paste this in, what we want to do is run a loop that takes each row, copies the data over here, and then we reference this output of this cell in our code as the message of each of our emails as it loops through our list of clients. So the first thing we want to do is set up the formula that makes up the message of our email. This is just a merged cell here, nothing much to that. So we're going to begin by equals and then within double quotes, enter some text. Hello, space. I'm going to close it out with a set of double quotes because we're going to use the and symbol to join this to this cell here to get the first name. I'm going to use an and symbol to join this back to some more text. So it needs to be enclosed in double quotes again. We want a comma after the name. After that, what I want to do is come down a couple of lines. So I'm going to hit Alt Enter two times and begin with your invoice number, double quotes, and then a and symbol to join this to our next cell. Another and symbol to join this to more text space in the amount of another and symbol now these next two cell references need to be formatted in a particular way so what we're going to use for both of them is the text function has two inputs the value or cell reference and then the second input is the format you want it in so the first input is our cell reference and then we want to format this in a currency style format. So that would be something like this. And then another and symbol to join this back to more text. Space is due on another and symbol and then the text function again this time we want to format it in a date so join this to a period and again what I want to do is come down a couple of lines so I'm going to hit alt enter two more times and then thank you alt enter again to come down one line just put some generic company name here and there it is so if I put someone else's data in here it just updates automatically so we'll reference this cell for the body of our email message. So now we are ready to begin writing our code. So we want to get into the editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 on your keyboard or going up to developer and visual basic button. Now, before we write our code, one thing that you absolutely must do is go to tools, references, and I already have this checked, this Microsoft Outlook 16 object library. If you don't have it checked, and you probably won't because it's not a default selection, 
you won't see it up here you'll have to scroll down till you get to it alphabetically so that needs to be checked because it enables methods properties and objects specific to Microsoft Outlook which is what we're going to use to send emails out of so anywhere in this project window I'm gonna to go to insert and then module we'll call this subroutine send emails and we're gonna begin by declaring some variables first one's gonna be called WB it's gonna be as the data type workbook represents the workbook we're in now we're gonna have one called WS as the data type worksheet and that represents the sheet we're on now called mail list we're gonna have a variable called last row gonna be as the data type long just represents the last row containing records in our email contact list because we want something dynamic that always gets the last row in case we add new records we're gonna have a variable called Outlook app short for Outlook application so that is going to be as the data type Outlook Oops. and then application that just represents Outlook as an application we're gonna have one called Outlook email and that is gonna be as the data type Outlook and then mail item because it's gonna represent each email item as a variable so we'll begin by setting our workbook variable that is going to be equal to this workbook the one we're in now we're going to set our worksheet variable equal to our workbook variable and then worksheets and our worksheet name is called mail list our last row variable which is just going to dynamically always get wherever the last row is in our email list is going to be equal to our worksheet variable and then cells and then rows count and we know there's always going to be data in column A so we'll use column 1 there so this takes us to the very bottom of our spreadsheet in column A and then from there we want to end Excel up that's like hitting control up arrow and that will bring us to whatever the last row containing values is in column A and return that row number so at this point what we want to do is our for loop because we want to loop through each of these rows copy the range B through E paste it over here to be able to get this as the message of the body of our email so we need to declare a counter variable we'll just call I for iterator and it's gonna be as the data type long because it's a number just represents the row number of each of the rows in our data set of contacts so we're going to begin with the keyword for for loop just repeats a series of steps based on a beginning and ending point you specify so our counter variable in our for loop is going to be equal to two to our last row variable because we want it to start on row two where our data begins and go to our last row that contains values so now at this point we need to set up <coughs> these Outlook variables so our Outlook application variable and these are object variables so they need to begin with the keyword set is equal to a new Outlook application this is just the highest level so we have to start at the application level and then we're gonna set our Outlook email variable equal to our Outlook application variable and then create item and we want to create an Outlook mail item 
because this variable will hold our emails with all of the client information in that email. So what we also want to do in our loop is, as I said, copy the data in this range here for each of our rows, paste it over here because we want to reference the formula output of our message. So what we want to do is on our worksheet in range B, And for our row, we're going to use our counter variable. So we're going to use an AND symbol to join this to our counter variable, another AND symbol to join this back to a semicolon for our range reference, and then the end of our range E, another AND symbol to join that to our counter variable. So this loop starts at 2, so this is a range reference of B2 through E2. And what do we want to do with that? We want to copy the data and the destination. We want to place that data in is H2 through K2. So now we're ready to define everything for our email message. So we want to do multiple things to our email variable. So we're going to use a with statement. The first thing we want to do is set the recipient. So we're going to use to set that equal to the values here in these rows in column A. So that is going to be equal to worksheet and we're going to use cells this time because it allows a number input for the row and column index so the row is going to be our counter variable which begins on row 2 and that's column A so that's column 1 next we're going to define our subject which is going to be equal to the text invoice number and then we're going to use an AND symbol to join this to our worksheet cells, our counter variable for the row, and then we want to get the row number, or sorry, the column number of the invoice, which is column 3, column C. So then we have our body and that is just going to be a fixed cell reference because we have the formula here that gets our body which that is cell H6 it's a merged cell So now we could do one of two things. We could use the send method, and that would be that. That would send out the message. Uh, what I would recommend here is using the display method because that fills out the complete email message, just puts it visible right in front of you um, so you can see it and make sure all of the data pulled correctly and then if so then you can send the message out so that is everything we want to do so we're going to end our with statement and remember that we're still in a for loop so we need to use the keyword next and reference our counter variable to get to the next iteration of our loop because this first time it would go around on row 2 this would then take it back up to the top to increment it to row 3 and it would keep repeating this until we get to our last row whatever that may be so I am gonna hit play here what we should see is our three email messages displayed in front of us And there they are. So you can see 
this message. It says, hello, Lance, your invoice number 1003 in the amount of 4557 is due on June 30th. Thank you, ABC Company. Well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.